Please stand and join in our opening hymn. Gather. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this one 
wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journey in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one love. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, just as the Father has sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who eat and still die, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the greatest joys of being a pastor is that regardless of how many priests are assigned to the parish, the pastor always gets to preach at the first communion ceremony. I have had that privilege for 34 years. But this year, my last year, to be able to celebrate that Mass, I was denied it because of the Kenora virus. Like so many, life is not normal for us. So we have been denied the things that, that we truly enjoy. And that, for me, was one of them. There's just something very, very special about being with a group of children who are so enthusiastic, who are so innocent, who are so wide open to what they believe in, who are so thrilled because Jesus is coming to them for the very first time. You remember that feeling, don't you? You made your first communion, so did I. I can remember having that feeling and feeling this is just the most special thing ever to happen. The heck of the party and the cake and the clothes. Hey, this is awesome stuff. Well, Pew, the Pew Research Company people, a few years ago, took up a survey of Catholics, both practicing and non-practicing, non between the ages of 18 and 45. And they found that 70% of them, those polled, did not believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Imagine. 70% did not believe that Christ was present in the Eucharist. And perhaps it's one reason why so many Catholics have stopped going to Mass altogether. After all, why go when you're getting nothing out of it? But it, more than anything else, I think points to the fact that we have a very serious 70% of people not believing in the Eucharist, the center of our life of faith, what gathers us together each Sunday, do not believe it's real, that's a problem. And it's one we need to face. So what I'm going to do today is, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to give you the beginning of the sermon that I had prepared for the First Communion case that I never gave. Just the beginning. I was going to ask them questions. I know better than to do that. <laughs> bread. Think about bread. Think about standing in the aisle of the supermarket and looking at all the many different kinds of bread. There's white bread, whole wheat bread, 
cinnamon raisin bread, there's pumpernickel and rye, they make great sandwiches. There's bread that's sliced and unsliced. And there's international bread too, there's Italian bread and French bread. And then there's other breads in that aisle that aren't called bread, but they still are bread. Like dinner rolls, hot dog buns, and my favorite, donuts. <laughs> All these many different kinds of bread. And we can choose which one we want and which one we enjoy, which one is the best use for what we want to use to do it with. But there is only one bread. Only one bread that can strengthen and feed us spiritually, that can feed us a holiness. There is only one bread that can feed us for a lifetime spiritually and keep our faith strong and keep our love, God's love within us, alive. And that is the bread of life itself. The gift Jesus gave us on the day he died, the night before he suffered, and the bread and the wine, the body and blood he poured out for us. And he tells us to do it in memory of him, not as a remembrance only, but continue doing it over and over again. He continues to be sacrificed for our sins each and every time we celebrate Mass. It's not a commemoration, we're not just remembering it or looking back fondly on it or, re or, re or reliving an act that happened long ago. It continues to happen all the time. He continues to be present with us, to die for us, to save us. That's the food that gives us life. And it's the food we celebrate in this Eucharist and in every Eucharist we celebrate. You know, if we listen to the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy, we see the story of the Israelites who had to travel from their slavery in Egypt to the Promised Land for 40 years through the desert. 40 years for those people was a lifetime. Most of them never lived to enter the Promised Land. It was their children who made it that far. It was a difficult and painful journey. In the book of Deuteronomy, we hear there were snakes and scorpions but there was also a terrible lack of water and a lack of food. And the people began to grumble to Moses and complain, hey, things were tough in Egypt, but they were better than they are here. We had a hard time with the Pharaoh, but Jesus, at least we got fed once or twice a week. You're not doing anything for us. We want to go back to Egypt. It's better there in slavery than what God wants us to. And for all of us who are on a journey of life from birth to death, we can be that way sometimes. The journey can seem very long and very hard. There can be periods of great dryness, sadness, challenge, illness, pain, financial insecurity, all kinds of things that can challenge us. So what do we do? Well, we, we tend to do what the Israelites do. Let's go back to the old way. For us, that means, well, let's go back to the easy ways of doing things, which usually means the wrong ways. Let's turn back to our, our sinful ways. Let's turn back to lying and cheating, and let's go back. It makes it easier when it's so hard to be good. It makes it easier to be bad. We forget that. So what did God do? He sent the manna in the desert. Each morning, the ground was covered with this very unusual bread. And not only did he do it once or twice, God continued to provide that food for them every day until they reached the borders of Palestine and were about to enter the Promised Land. He never failed to feed them. And he sustained them for the remainder of that journey, no matter how difficult or how challenging it was. He never failed them, and he gave them what they needed. Perhaps it is the same way with us. We have the food, the bread of life that feeds us and sustains us on our journey through this life. If we fail to take advantage of that, we starve ourselves. The Lord is always there to fill us with his grace and feed us with his bread of life so that we may make the right choices, so 
so that we may be generous, we may be kind, we may become more like Christ through eating of his body and blood so that when our time comes, we will complete the journey. The journey that started on the day we were claimed for Christ at our baptism. So on this journey, let us remember that we journey together, never alone. We should be careful not to think that because there are so many different types of bread, that we are free to choose whatever we prefer when it comes to our spiritual lives. There's only one bread that feeds us for our journey that is our lifetime. And let us, let us together process to the altar today to receive the Lord, His real presence, His body and blood, so that, with, and do it with devotion and love, for we know that, and we believe, that He will always give us the food. Together let us profess the faith we share. I believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God true God, the God from God made, consubstantial to the Father, through him all by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and the For our sake he was crucified on the conscious life. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit,
There are three baskets at the end of the child. Please place your contribution in any, any one of the three baskets that should be in the church today. And please know that we're always grateful to you for your generosity. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and worth of your hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and worth of your hands, it will become for us our spiritual. Once more, giving thanks, 
gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
those who cannot celebrate the Eucharist with us, but are at home watching this Mass, we, we offer to them this opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus in the Eucharist, if not physically, then spiritually, as we say the prayer of St. Alphonsus the Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you are already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, so let me never be separated. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Just one announcement, and that is that next Sunday, although the the weekend of June 28th, 27th and 28th is my last weekend here. But next weekend I will be saying my formal goodbyes. And I'll be speaking at all the masses and, and I'll try to set something up in the back so that you can safely greet me without breaking the governance rules. Uh, and at least have a chance to say goodbye. It's not perfect, it's not what I would have wanted, uh, but it's the best that we have. It doesn't mean that I, I, I think any less of anyone here or wouldn't want to be able to see everyone. That just isn't going to be possible. And then at the 10.30 Mass next Sunday, Father Maha will be joining me, who is celebrating his 60th anniversary as a priest. That is a great milestone. And he's still so vital and active. And so he'll be joining me at the 10.30 Mass, and after that Mass, we hope to have some light refreshments uh, outside uh, on the patio weather permitting. So please plan to join us if you can. The Lord be with you. Yes, the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go. Amen.